Hi everyone, Sandy Trefker here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video is part one of the tutorial on how to make this gatefold Halloween folio album. Now the finished size measures six and a quarter wide by eight inches tall with a one and a half inch spine. This is a design for country craft creations and in this video I show you how to assemble the cover the flaps on the two sides, finishing on the inside, and uh, the sliders on the spine. So we will do the center part of the folio in part two. So stay tuned for the tutorial starting right after my intro. Before we get started on the tutorial, I'm going to zoom out and show you this folio opened up. Here on the front, we've got a slip-on belly band with a seam binding ribbon bow. The seam binding is available at Country Craft Creations, a little plastic jack lantern and spider. I use some of the Nouveau Crystal Glaze on some fussy cutting that I did here on the side. So this just slides off. This is a gatefold folio, so this slides off. And then these two panels open back. On the left side, we have a little flap with a photo frame here that flips up and down. And we have miniature up and down waterfalls here in this section. Both spines have a fun feature, a slider. It's just a little fun element here that you can slide these up and down. And then the right side here, this unties also. We have a pocket on the front with a tag inside, a long tag. It's a lot of fun. And then this opens back. We have a flap here that opens up, and then these flaps open this away. So you can put little pictures in here. Just like that. And then this side has a pocket where we have a cut apart in here. It's an angle pocket. This goes back inside. And then we have another long pieced tag that slips down in behind this angle pocket like that right there. So this one goes inside here. So that's that side. And then the center we have a booklet that comes out and it's all patterned to say fold out booklet. So you untie that. So lots of places for photos here. That, like that. We have a cut apart. We have a magnetic holding this flap down so it lifts up and then this one flips down. We have little mini tags here under the under the belly band. And this flips down so you have room for pictures here as well as a couple up here. This folio has a fun feature here on the center. Uh, it has full pages that measure about five and a half by seven and three quarters for lots of photos. So this one has the flap, as I said, where you can put a photo mat in, but the rest of them I've left where you can, except for this one, that this has a magnetic cut apart. So I thought that was fun. You can put a picture under there and then add this on and then journal about your Halloween events. But the rest of them I've left plain so that you can add photos. So I'm going to flip through and show you how many are inside here. Like that. And then all the way to the back we have a pocket. And we have photo mats that you could use. You could add more than what I have in here. I have a fun photo mat here. And then a skeleton cut apart inside here. And a little tiny tag down in this one. So we have one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 uh, sides total. So it's eight pages front and back inside this center section for lots of photos of your Halloween party or special event. So that is my Cartabella Halloween Market gatefold 
folio for Country Craft Creation. So let's get started now on the tutorial. For this Halloween folio, I'm using my design team package that I received from Country Craft Creations, which included uh, the Cartabella Halloween Market Paper Collection. So I received two sheets of 12 different designs for a total of 24 pattern papers. That's what I'm going to start out with. I received two 12 by 12 medium weight chipboard. I'm going to do those for the covers. And I added in the black artisan cardstock. I have a package here of 25. I may not need all of that, but I do have that to start with. And then I have the Cartabella frames and tags package and the ribbons from Country Craft Creations. Also the black, the beige or cream and the rust color. So that's what I'm going to be using for this project. I may add in some more stuff from my own stash, but I will let you know when I add in. So uh, let's go ahead and get started on making our cover for the folio. To make the cover for our folio, we're going to make this one have a one and a half inch spine. It's going to be a gate fold, six inches wide by eight inches tall. So for the spines, I have cut two of the medium weight chipboard that are one and a half by eight inches. And then I cut two pieces of cardstock to wrap because we're going to use uh, Tamara's of Country Craft Creations uh, easy cover method of wrapping and assembling the cover. So you want two cardstock pieces that are four and a half by ten. That's for the spines. For the front of the gatefold, I have two that are three inches by eight, two pieces of cardstock that are five by ten. For the back main part of the folio, you need a piece of uh, chipboard that is six by eight, and the cardstock you need one piece that is eight by ten. So we're going to start off with this one first. I am using art glitter glue. You can use score tape sheets if you want or score tape roll strips. So for this one I'm using the glue. Oh and I need to grab my scoreboard and my placement guides, my mat. So I want to put this in all the way to the side and the top and then grab my so these are from Country Craft Creations my placement guides should have already had those ready to go and so I add a little more glue here because you want to make sure that it will stick some of it's still wet so I'm okay now we're going to use the one inch for this. So you put one on the left, one on the right, and then you place this down. But it but it begins those placement guides. Just like that. So we're going to do this on all of our chipboard pieces and then we'll wrap everything. So for the doors, put your cardstock in. Grab your one inch placement guides. Put one at the top. I'd like to put this one at the top because it fits perfectly and then this one can extend down. And one on the side. Glue on the back of your chipboard piece. other one do the same thing and again like I said these spacers you can purchase a set of them from country craft creations you get two one inch and one one and a half inch and you'll see why you need just the one of the one and a half inch to do your album covers this way and they're available from country craft creations online at countrycraftcreations.com in case you're wondering. Okay, sometimes they're out of stock, but they usually get them in pretty quick. They've been very popular, so that's why they 
sell out. So always check back for that. Okay. Then for our little spine, we're going to use one, the one inch here. And we're going to use the half inch, one and a half inch, I'm sorry, here on the side. We want wider wings. So we'll put the glue on one piece. And the last one. One inch at the top, the one and a half on the side. Glue on the chipboard. Move all these out of the way. Slide this up. Sorry if I've been off frame. I try to do better at that, but sometimes it just gets closer to me. Good, did I? It'll be okay. Okay. All right. So now we're ready to put them together. We can put our spacers away. That's all we need them for for this project. And so that I have plenty of room, I'm going to go ahead and move my mat out of the way. So let's set this uh, spine ones aside. Let's take our back piece first. And we're going to fold on all three, four sides to wrap this. And if you're using the artisan cardstock, you're really going to have to burnish it pretty good. Now it won't usually won't crack. I've never had any problem. If you do, it could be that your bone folder is too sharp. I like to use the Teflons that are rounder. Once you do that, you have your little clear marks of a square. We're going to take our scissors. Now you can either cut out the square or you can do an angle cut like this where you leave about an eighth of an inch, a sixteenth of an inch, I'm sorry. There, a paper from the tip out. You don't want to cut it all the way out. Okay, now I'm going to do the long sides first. I take my glue. You can use score tape too if you want to. I put glue right along the edge of the chipboard and then on my flap that I'm going to wrap over. I love art glitter glue. It's very fast. It dries really fast and it holds. It keeps it attached. I have had problems with score tapes and other tapes coming loose. So I do like to use the glue. I use the score tape to help me hold things down if I need to, along with the glue. So we put a line of glue here and then on the flap. Pull it over. And burnish. Now the short ends, you check your paper down here. If you need to push it in with your fingernail, any excess that's sticking over, just on that little corner tip, glue. Bring it over and burnish. get a really nice mitered corner here. Got some glue right there. I want to get off a little piece of paper. Okay. Same thing for the other side. Press back that corner if you need to. You can also, if you don't have a fingernail, you can also use your bone folder to just kind of round it in there. OK, 
Okay, so that's our wrapped back cover piece. We're going to do the two doors. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to fold. Finish. And I'm just going to do one, but you will do both of them exactly the same. I mean, I'm going to do both, but I'm just going to do one on the camera. Miter. Cut out the corners. long side first pull it over and start burnishing stick down really good other long side Okay, now we're ready for the short side again. Either use your bone folder to tuck that in. It's just a tiny bit of paper that overextends. I'm going to go ahead and do both corners. From this piece, that overextends into this flap. So you, you don't want them sticking out when you fold over. So you want them to come in nice and neatly. So we, we fold them in, I guess you could say, or press them in. So we'll go ahead and get this on. And the other side. Pull it over and burnish it. Okay, so that is the front piece of our cover. So I'm going to go ahead and do this other one. Then I'll show you doing the spines. Okay, for the spines, I've already done one. You're going to fold the ends, both ends up over the chipboard. Go ahead and burnish that. I'm burnishing up along the side of that chipboard there. You open it up and we're going to cut out these two outer rect rectangles on both ends. So right up to the point. Just cut those away right along the score line or the fold line that you made. Those two, do it on both ends. Cut out the two outer rectangles of the cardstock up to the corner of the chipboard here. Just like that. Then we're going to fold these over and we're going to glue these down, these two flaps, over onto the chipboard just like this burnish it make sure it sticks down both ends pull that and 
Now I'm going to check these, turn it over. If I see a little bit sticking out, just barely put your scissors up against that chipboard and just kind of trim that off a little bit where you cut up to the line. This one looks okay, I think. Maybe just a tiny bit. These are the wings here that are going to attach. Now turn it over with the cardstock face and you find the edge of your chipboard and just burnish right up against it and get a nice indention. Use your rounded part of your bone folder, not the sharp part. You don't want to poke a hole in your paper. So just burnish, burnish. That's going to be our fold line of our spines. Okay, so see we have these two like this. That's the spines. We have the two front doors and we have the back wrap. So let's take our spine and we're going to put the back one. Take one of your spine pieces. We're going to put the back on the left side of this one, this front side on the left. Now I am going to use glue. I'm going to make sure that my glue line stays away because it will ooze out about an eighth of an inch away from that fold indention that I made. Get your glue on there. Take your first, your back cover piece. You want the finished side facing up. You're going to butt it right up against that chipboard of a spine. Okay. Burnish that really well. Turn it over and burnish. Make sure that wing has stuck down. Okay. Now then, we want the other one on the left side. Okay, I'm going to turn it around so that it's easier to see for me. So now it's on my right. So you want to wing on to this part here. Same thing. A line of glue. About an eighth of an inch from that indention. Glue on the wing. Take your chipboard back. Place it right up against the chipboard Oops. of the spine piece. Burnish it. Turn it over and burnish that wing. Okay, now we're ready to put on our front flaps. So I'm going to re-burnish this to make sure I can see it really good here. Each wing. So it's hard to see here in the camera. We have our chipboard back, our chipboard spine here, which is one and a half, and then we have a one and a half inch just cardstock. You can see it from the back like that. Okay, these are going to attach on the front right here. So I'm going to put glue again about an eighth of an inch line from that fold and then over the entire wing piece. Take my door piece and attach it right up against the chipboard of the spine. Slip it, burnish that. Okay, now the other side, same thing. We're going to put glue, line of glue, about an eighth of an inch. On the edge, go ahead and get the glue on all the wing. And you'll notice I am on the finished side. Grab this unfinished side down. Have to be, press this up against it. And burnish. And turn it over. And burnish again. Now we're ready to fold it up. So you just bring it together. Make sure all your glue's dried. 
but this is how your cover will look. Now it will have a closure piece on it, like a belly band, or a tie, some kind of closure. So that is the gatefold folio right there. Okay, so now we're ready to put some paper in it and get it ready for some flaps and pages. For the inside of the cover, cut two pieces of cardstock that are seven and seven eighths by seven and seven eighths, and then put score tape on the back. I had to piece this one. This one's already on. So what this is going to do is cover up all the way across, and it will overlap a little bit here in the middle of the back section. So I'm going to go ahead and peel all my tape backing off. A little ran a little short on one piece here, so I pieced it. It should be fine. I can use a little bit of glue on there if I had to. The reason you want to use score tape sheets, so where you're covering up over your spine folds, that it does not buckle from using glue because glue will make it buckle. So now this one we're going to put over here almost to the edge not quite i'm just checking it real quick not quite to the bottom about an eighth of an inch from the top and the bottom and about an eighth of an inch probably from the edge and i'm just double checking before i press it down and then bring it all the way across and then burnish that okay so we've got that covered then we're going to bring our spine up I mean our folds and we're going to just burnish in that and that's going to go right here so remember we have two spine sections very gently just bring them up it's not going to crack on the outside because remember it's not wrapped it has that space but you want to bend it here and remember the seam here is going to be covered up by pattern paper so don't worry about that so bring this up and the last one and just burnish into that fold and give it a chance to start bending and there we have you can go ahead and fold it kind of fold it in and there we have the cover with the inside covered as well Okay, so now we're ready to, I uh, think I'm going to go ahead and probably pattern the outside of my cover and then put a belly band on before we start working on the inside sections. So I'm going to go ahead and pick out my papers and then get that all together and go ahead and put them on. For the outside of the cover, what's really neat with this design is you can flatten your covers out when you use this easy wrap method. So I've used one sheet of 12 by 12 paper from the collection. I used the pumpkins and I cut two that are two and seven eighths wide by seven and seven eighths. One that is uh, five and seven eighths wide by seven and seven eighths tall and then you turn it sideways from the leftover piece it doesn't matter on the plaid and cut two that are one and three eighths by seven and seven eighths and now I'm going to just glue all these down onto the outer cover so I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera to save some time video time and I'll be back showing you after it's covered okay so the front cover I've glued it all on so that's what it looks like and then when you fold it up of course it's gonna look like that to create a slide on belly band closure for the cover I've cut two pieces of cardstock nine and seven eighths by one and seven eighths tall I'm going to score at one and seven eighths from the left end. I've got my nine and seven eighths in at the top. I'm going to turn and I'm going to score again at one and seven eighths. So we have two equal scores there on both ends. We'll do that same on this one. 
9 and 7 eighths of an inch at the top, score it 1 and 7 eighths, turn, score it 1 and 7 eighths. Okay, take these, don't fold and burnish, just leave them flat for now. Take your glue, put glue in one of the sections of the 1 and 7 eighths right here. And you're going to take the other piece and you're going to line up the 1 and 7 eighths of this end to this one. Just get them on really nice and straight. Burnish that. Okay. Now then take your other end. Put glue on this 1 and 7 eighths square here section and bring the other one in. So you're making a belly band that will just slide on over the album. So I'm going to line these up. This is going to give us a double thickness on our ends, on our sides. Now take this, uh, let that dry just a second more to now fold along each fold line score line here which one of them will be where you've added the end of the other so you have a belly band shaped like that take your cover and let's fit it over it maybe a little tight to get it on been cover just like that so you want these to meet if it were a little looser it would it would not fit tight enough so I've got it stretched pretty good across the back and then this right here so we've got our parts that we will add in so that's our belly band closure it just slides on and off the double thickness on the sides helps with the sliding so it doesn't tear Okay, that's that. So that's your double, uh, your belly band slide on closure for your album cover. And we will pattern each section with some paper scraps. So you can wait to do that later until you have some scraps. Or you can go ahead and cut some paper now, whichever you want to do. I'm going to go ahead and pattern mine. I'm going to use another sheet of the pumpkin uh, pattern from the collections so I cut two that are five and seven eighths wide by one and three quarters tall and then two that are one and three quarters tall by one and three quarters wide so I'm going to go ahead and glue these on so I'm using the plaid on the front and the back to contrast with the pumpkins that I have on those sections and then I will use the pumpkin side on the spine sides to contrast with the plaid there. So I'm going to just line this up. Hold that so I can burnish. Turn it over, put this plaid one on. This is a really fun Halloween collection. So if you haven't ordered it yet, I suggest that you check on it right away because, you know, some holiday papers. Um, tend to start running out and these are available while supplies last at countrycraftcreations.com there we go line that up now the little spines so I'm just going to line up these little jack-o-lanterns print So now any decorations that I put on the front of my album will probably go, especially dimensional stuff, will probably go on the belly band because you want to be able to slide that. You don't want anything thick on this part. So everything will go on there. And so now we're ready to start working on the sections inside of the folio 
as soon as I get this one stuck on. Okay, there it is. I like how that looks. So we're ready to start working on the inside. For the inside left flap, we're going to put a little mini waterfall. It's going to do an up down. So these will flip up, these will flip down. They will fit here in this section. Not the spine, but the first flap on the left. So I have cut one piece of cardstock that is two and seven eighths wide by seven and seven eighths tall. This is for the base. There's no scoring on this one. I have two closure flaps that are two and seven eighths of an inch wide by six inches tall and you're going to score them both at a half inch and three quarters of an inch. So you have this one done and then you're going to fold them so that you have a, a half inch attachment flap here on the ends underneath and you have a quarter inch space or spine right there. So you'll do that on both of them. So you can see you have your half inch on the uh, attachment flap on the inside. And then for the little waterfalls, you're going to cut six that are two and seven eighths by three and a quarter. And you're going to score your three and a quarter, put that in at the top, and you're going to score at just three eighths. Okay. I've already done all of mine. You're going to go ahead and fold all these and burnish them. So I will be doing that off camera. Let me show you one. So you just fold it and burnish so that you will have a little 3 8 inch attachment flap right there. I have mine all folded and burnished before I put anything together. I'm going to take my scallop and stub punch. I'm going to use a stub punch for the two bottom corners opposite the fold. So do that on all of your six waterfall flaps and then I'm also going to do it on my two closure flaps. So go ahead and punch all those if you want to or you can round them or leave them square. So before I assemble this I have cut out my pattern paper so I used the rest of my pumpkins 12 by 12 sheet that I had and I cut out for the Closure flaps, I cut out two that are two and three quarters wide by five and one eighth tall for the waterfall flaps. I cut out six that are two and three quarters wide by two and three quarters tall. So what I'm doing is just patterning the outside right now. I'm going to set my closures aside. I'm going to go ahead and glue these on. Uh, what I did is uh, a scallop punched the corners of the cardstock and then I no, I stub punch. Sorry, I stub punch. See those right there? Let me hold it up. That's a stub punch where it's a little circle, half circle. Stub punch the cardstock, and then I scallop punch the um, pattern paper to give me this little decorative look. So all of these pattern ones, like I said, are cut two and three quarters by two and three quarters. So I'm just going to be gluing those down. I'm not going to do that on camera. I'm going to go ahead and cover the fronts of all of my little waterfall flaps. And um, so I need to pay attention. These are going to be opening up or flipping down, and these will be flipping up. So I had to think about your pattern, your design, especially for the pumpkins, where they're going to go and where you punch your corners. So I punched on the bottom of these. So I'm just going to take my art glitter glue. And all six of these, I'll go ahead and put pattern paper on the flaps before I actually attach them into the onto the base for the waterfall. So just a little narrow border all the way around. So go ahead and do all those. Okay, so for your waterfall base, it's cut the same width as your flaps. So you're going to take your first one for the top and you're just going to put glue on that 3 8 attachment flap there. I'm going to line this up right on the cut edge of the base. Make sure we're lining up 
on the sides here. So flip that up, take your second one, and you're going to butt it up right up against that cut edge of the one you just put down. Glue on your 3 8 inch flap. Butt it up. Make sure it's lined up down here on the sides. And the third one goes under here. Now if I had thought before I punched my corners, it would have been cute to have alternated these and put a plaid one in between, but I didn't. So they're all the same on this top side, and then they're all going to be the same on the bottom. So it's going to be like that. So we turn it, and we're going to put our first one on, and it's going to go this way, so it faces the center. Both of them face the center. So put your glue on your 3 8 inch attachment flap. Line it up the same way right along that cut line. Make sure the edges are straight. Second one. Attach it up against that cut edge of the first flap. that one and then your third one and attach that oops gotta make sure it's straight okay there we go Okay, so that's the down, and there's the up. So now we have space in between that we're going to pattern as well. And then we've got your flaps. This one's going to go here on the bottom. Close your flap. So I'm going to go ahead and put my pattern piece on this one. And did I give you the measurements for that? It is two and three quarters wide by five and one eighth tall and then of course I punch the corners with a deck scallop punch. So let's go ahead and put this one on. Yes that goes on the bottom. Just double checking myself. Now remember you have two fold lines so it's going to go here at the top, but not over your second score line for your quarter inch. Put our closure flap onto the back here. So your glue is going to go, looking at it like this, open it up and put your glue on the underside, just the half inch, not your quarter inch. And then you're going to take it and line up this fold of your waterfall piece right there up against it. Make sure there's side to side. I'm going to go ahead and burnish that and then reposition. Turn it over and burnish this back side. Then reposition my little half inch like that. This is where they're folded under. Open them up so that you see just the half inch there on the inside. Glue. Line this up up to the fold line. Don't go over with a half in, uh, quarter inches. Line it up side to side. Let's turn it over and burnish. Oops. Came loose. Okay. There we go. Now then. I had myself confused there. My piece came loose. Put some more glue on this one. I never had that happen before, so make sure it is burnished on good. I'll line it up again and burnish it. Okay, right there. So now we have it like that.
instead of ribbon by cutting it in half, I'm going to go ahead and put the full across the back because it's only two and seven eighths wide there. So I'll make sure I have enough ribbon for tying. Turn this over. And about the halfway point, I'm going to put some score tape. So halfway of eight, they're about eight, is about four. So we're going to put that right there. Line this up. Right about there. Just a piece of score tape. Go ahead and take the backing off. Fold my ribbon in half. So I'm on my half point and put it right across the back. And then it wraps around and it'll tie. Now I am going to crinkle this up some. And to do that, you don't have to get it really wet. I just put a little bit of water in my hand. And I just, so I could have done this before I attached it, but. But I didn't. So I just kind of wrinkle it up. You just get it damp enough. So I crinkled them up and I'm letting them dry. And I did tie a knot in the ends of each one. And then while those are drying, I went ahead and cut a piece of pattern paper for inside here. So I didn't want to cut um, a new sheet. So I'm using this one from the scraps. And it's inside the base. You want to cut a piece that's two and three quarters wide by six and a quarter tall. So we're going to glue that in. And like I said, the backs of these, I'm going to leave them, um, everything, just the plain black for now. Because you can put photos in on that and not waste your pattern paper until you see that you have enough for your whole project. So, you know, mine may just stay plain like that. So these come up, these come down, and then of course your flaps like that, and then you tie it. So you assemble and pattern all this before we actually put it in the cover. So I'm just going to tie this in a bow. Kind of wrinkle it up some more. Still a little damp, not, not bad. It'll wrinkle up some. So make sure your quarter inch spaces are there. And then we'll grab our cover. And that's going to fit right in here on this three inch section here. So I'm going to take my glue and put a good amount of glue here at the top and all the way down even over the ribbon glue here at the bottom you don't want it coming up have to stay in really good okay so I'll turn it over and I'll turn this so I can see and make sure it's fitting within the ends and within the fold of the spine section there. So let's open it up so we can get to the inside and burnish. So there's our up down waterfall. Got the space there in the middle. You could put a little sticker or something in there and then I think I will probably put like a frame or something here on this one when I do the decorating. So for now I'm just going to tie it back up. And then we'll be ready to start working on the inside of the other section across on the right side. Right over here. Okay, that's cute. So there's that. And our belly band just fits right over that. For the right side flap on the inside of our folio opposite of our waterfall over here on this little uh, three inch flap I have pre-cut my cardstock and scored it 
So my first piece is going to be a flap. And I cut this at seven and seven eighths by three and a half. And you're going to score on your three and a half inch side at a half inch and at three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to go ahead and fold those and use my bone folder to burnish them. Just the half inch one and then the quarter inch one. Kind of fold into it. There we go. And burnish those. So we have the half inch attachment flap on the back and then we have the quarter inch there on the side. So I'm going to just set these aside for right now. Then on that we're going to put a pocket on the front. So it's going to attach to the right side. So we're going to put a pocket on the front. So I have cut one piece at three and three quarters by five. And I've scored the three and three quarter inch side at a half inch and at three and a quarter. Turn it and score the five inch side at a half inch. And then grab your scissors and go ahead and do an angle cut just right across where those intersect to eliminate the bulk. I'm going to fold them. These are the attachment flaps. So you have three, two on the sides, one on the bottom. And we want to make sure that this is cut at an angle enough that they don't overlap. It's mattered enough that and a little more on this one. Okay. So that's the pocket that's going to fit fit on top of this flap here right there so set that aside the next piece we want to cut before we do all the assembling is on the inside of this flap we're going to have some short flaps so I have cut two that are two and three quarters by four and a half and score the four and a half inch side at a half inch on both. Set those aside for now. And then a flaps added onto those, I'm going to do two that are three and a quarter by four and I'm scoring the three and a quarter inch side at a half inch. Um, both of those. Or your three and a quarter inch side at a half inch on both of those. So I'll lay those right there. And then I have another pocket that's going to be an angle pocket. And this one is three and a quarter by four and a half. I'm going to score my three and a quarter side at a half inch and turn and score the four and a half inch side at a half inch. And then we're going to do an angle cut. So I'm deciding, and we also want to cut this at an angle here. You want to miter cut your little corner, just like you did on the other pocket. Go ahead and fold this up. So there's going to be a little angle here. And I'm just going to, this fold it put it in my scoreboard and one put a just a little mark right there at one and then I'm going to turn it and I'm going to put another mark at two I'm going to take my big scissors and from one mark to the other I'm just going to cut like that so that's my angle cut we've got a little a ledge here it comes down and goes down like that so that's that type of pocket for that and then one more piece that we need is another little pocket
pocket is three and three quarters by two and a half and score your three and three quarters at a half inch and three and a quarter turn and score your two and a half inch side at a half inch and again angle miter cut the corner off fold it up to check it Get a little bit more cut off right here and check the other side okay there's that little pocket okay so we're ready to start assembling and probably adding the pattern paper as we go cut all my pattern papers for the elements on this left this right little flap and I will put the measurements in my cutting guide or cutting list that will be in the description down below you have to click on show more to see it in the description of the video um, so I'm not going to give those to you as I'm adding them in because that just takes up more time so it will be in the description I am using two sheets of the spooky ghost from the Halloween market by Cartabella for this side and so we're going to start out first we're going to have a ribbon closure so I've already cut a piece of the rust colored seam binding ribbon from Country Craft Creations crinkled spritzed it with water and crinkle, crinkled it up crinkled crinkled whatever <laughs> and I cut a piece I hope it's conserving uh, more than I need but it's about 12 about 22 inches so that's that should be plenty and I'm going to try to put it about the same position as the one across from it so I'm just getting me a guide it doesn't have to be exact measure about half way and lay this right here and then I'm going to get some score tape and I'm just going to lay it over it and hold it down until we get it everything in so let me set that aside and then I'm going to grab the little flap that's going to go it's going to go right here on the right side on the inside the one with the quarter inch and I'm going to put pattern paper on the very front first but I'm also going to go ahead and stub punch the two corners opposite the fold lines and I'm going to use ghost I'll lay that right here but first I'm going to do my pocket I'm going to attach it and I want my my envelope punch board Let me grab that right quick I keep everything in tools and a cart here beside me one of those tiered carts okay so I'm gonna punch this so this measures with the wings the flaps opened out to three and three quarters so center point three and three quarters for three is one and a half that's three and a half so right here at one and seven eighths is the center so I'm going to put my left edge at one and seven eighths right there and punch so that gives me that little notch in my pocket now my pattern paper for this one and seven eighths right there and then I'm going to back it up a little bit something doesn't look quite right oh it's much smaller yeah I'm going to lay it on here and mark it. I don't want to mess up. So I want to try to get it pretty, pretty close to what it's going to be. So this should be the center. Right there. OK, 
Okay, so punch that. Got that ready. Okay, move this out of the way for now. So let's grab the pocket first, and we're going to go ahead and glue this piece here that I cut out on first, where I punched the notch, and I'm going to use the stripe. up furnishing tool okay so now we're ready to put the pocket onto the flap so you have your hinges for your flap here to the right and this pocket's going to fit right in here and I did notch that, so that was kind of a... Uh, shouldn't have done that on the bottom. This uh, punch here, I can move this up, but then that's going to look funny unless I put my paper on first. So, and we're going to use the ghost paper. So I am going to put that on first to make it look right. So let me... Um, scallop punch the two left corners of my pattern paper the ghost paper so it's going to go right like that then I can move my pocket up just a little bit so that's going to work out fine have to pay attention to that with other pockets before I do my punching of my corners so let's line this on Now we'll put the pocket, and we're going to put it up just a little bit above that treatment down there on the corner. So you, uh, I'm going to burnish my attachment flaps really well to make sure they're laying flat. And then you put your glue on the back side of these attachment flaps. about right there so it should fit right in between that the edge of your flap and this score line here on the side so burnish those in so that gives us a nice long pocket for a tag that we'll make later right there now let's grab our cover And I think I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. But I may do these first. Yeah, I'm going to do these flaps first. On here. So we'll set that aside right there. We grab these flaps that we've done. Now then, we are going to do some punching on these. So we have the two that are up and down. And two that stack on to go the other way. So I think these go like this. I think that's how I want them. Okay. So fold and burnish your score lines on all your attachment hinges. So you have two that are on long sides and two that are on your short sides of your cardstock pieces. And these long and a short go together and long and short go together so this will be i'm going to put one to the top and one to the bottom okay so this is where this is going to go on the inside here so i'm just double checking and again i punched that and i should not have let's see how it goes if we scoot them down Okay, that's going to work fine too. Um, let's go ahead and put our pattern paper in, which is the stripe. So we're going to um, scallop punch 
the two right corners. I apologize for this, but it does show you that even if you do something out of order, you can you can adapt and adjust. So let's get the glue on this one. I'm using the stripe. So this is the inside right here of this. It's really hard to see it. There we go. You don't want to go over your quarter inch. But I'm going to put enough down to... There we go. Make sure it's on straight. So, these are going to go in here, and it is going to have some black showing here, but I'm okay with that, and I probably will put a strip of paper. So this one's going to go here, and I'm going to go ahead and put the pattern paper on both of these. So one's going on the bottom, one's going on the top. So let's go with... Go with two ghosts, maybe. Here and here. So these are to be stub punched on the bottom opposite of the folds. And again, if you don't want to do your corners, you don't have to. You can just leave them straight or just simply you know, do a rounding with them. Okay, then we take our papers. So on the bottom of this ghost, I'm going to scallop, yeah, scallop punch. I do the opposite of whatever I did on the cardstock, so there we go. It's two scallops, and then on the top of this one, two scallops. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put these on right quick, and then I'll do the inside papers. It's just easier. There's something like this to put him on before we put them in the, the cover of the out the folio. I'm still on camera here. attached like this. I'm going to turn them over and I'm going to do stripe it on this side. So scallop punch to two bottom corners and two top corners here with the stripe. It doesn't matter. You can reverse it so we get our, our punch in. Let's go ahead and glue these on. And the other one. We're ready to put them inside. So these go on the inside. And drop it down just a little bit. Let's make it straight. And 
see where this black is in here. It's no big deal. You can actually put a little strip of paper in there for decorate out of your scraps. And then this one's going to go about the same distance. So they do overlap, and that's fine. So put glue on your half inch attachment flap back here. And I'm looking at it and going to make them about the same. Same distance from here to there. This one needs moved over just a tad before it dries. There we go. Had it almost over my hinge. And that won't do. I mean, over your score line for my quarter inch. So that would not work. So I had to move it just a tad. Okay, now there's those. So for the next flaps, they're going to attach when you open these up. And I'm going to punch these. I'm making sure they're the right height. So the top with your fold to your right, take your flap and do a stub punch on the top right corner or whatever punch you use so that it matches up like that. You're going to have to do it on both corners. I'm sorry. Both top corners. There we go. Right through the, your attachment hinge, it's fine. So it'll attach right there and it'll match up. And then that will open up this away. Okay, so the bottom one is going to open up to the left. So we want the hinge on the left and we're going to up punch both bottom corners. Like that. Okay. So let's go ahead and put our pattern papers on. So this is this way. I am going to put ghost on these. So I need to scallop punch the top two for the top flap right there and then the bottom two for the bottom flap do a scallop okay now on the inside we're going to have these and I'm going to use the stripes so it doesn't matter just two top corners for that one and two bottom corners for this one Okay, now we're ready to put the pattern papers on. So let's do this one. We'll put the ghost on the front. Flip it over. I'm going to put stripe on the inside. Now I'm just using the same pattern on these sections to conserve paper. You could use different patterns on your flaps and things if you wanted to. I'm just using the same ones to use this pattern and keep kind of a kind of a mirror image or whatever you call it. You know, same on one side, same on the other, with the different patterns. Okay, so this one. In other words, I've used two patterns: one on the left and front and back of the other pattern on the right. But you can mix and match them, you know, any way that you want to. It will look good with Halloween. It doesn't, these papers are all cute, so they'll all work great. And the inside. Go. And now we're 
ready to put these on the inside of this. So this one goes here on the inside. And this one goes here on the inside. So on your half inch attachment flap, let's put this one to the left, matching it up, putting your notches all the way around, keep it nice and straight and burnish this in here. And then over here on the back side again. And match them up. Fold up just like that. Okay. Now, if you want to put some kind of little uh, closure here thing, you can, like a string one or something. I think they're going to be fine without. So, I changed my mind. When you lift this up, this one opens this way, and this one opens this way. Okay. So now. I'm ready to put them in the book. One of them is kind of hanging out a little wrong here. Let's see if I can straighten it just a tad. Okay, so grab our book. We're going to have to make sure our ribbon is going out to the right. And so this is going to take another piece of score tape and hold this down right here. Okay, so peel that backing off and go ahead and stick the ribbon to this one here. Straighten it up that way, that keeps it straight underneath this attachment flap right here. So you turn it so that you can see both your quarter inch and your half inch to your right. Now you're going to put your glue just on the half inch one. And then you're going to turn it and attach just the half inch right along the edge of the cover you you don't want and I'm flattening down this quarter inch so I can see it you don't want it extending beyond beyond your cover so I'm looking at it here on the inside and make sure everything fits within here And burnish it down and double check that everything's lined up right and let's take our bone folder and really burnish that you don't want it coming loose now we're going to be putting some pockets here on the inside before we add this this is going to go in here you can use either striped or and I may not have cut this wide enough I'll have to double check I have to use a different one on that one. So let's get these other pockets that we're going to make. And like I said, this will close up just like that. That was kind of still showing there on this side. I don't like. There we go. Okay. Have to keep playing with it. So let's do these pockets. So this is our angle pocket. And I'm going to use the stripe on it. So I cut this piece to fit within this. And then I marked it on the back side along that angle. And I'm going to cut to the inside of that line just a bit. Just to make sure see if it fits. 
Good, yeah. Just a tad more, not too much. Okay, so let's glue that one on. Just within the fold lines, you don't want to go over the attachment folds or flaps. There we go. So like that. And then this little one here, this little piece is going to attach the front of it. So we've got all these little fun pockets and flaps in here in this little section. pocket folds up and it's going to attach on top of this one here. So glue on your half inch attachment flaps back here on the back where they're folded over and just go ahead and push it all the way down to the fold line of the attachment flaps of the other pocket and burnish it so it should fit right in with start where that angle is okay burnish this and burnish this so we have a little pocket here for some things and then we have this angle pocket so this angle pocket's going to go right in here and i need to double check my pattern paper here so i cut this one i think too skinny i'm going to save this one and cut a new one and write that in my book. So it's going to be from here to there is two and seven eight. So it needs to be two and three quarters. Yeah, I cut it too narrow. So let me get that one cut. So I recut this one and the amount the measurement on the cutting list is correct. this backing off of this score tape that's holding the ribbon. I'm going to go ahead and stick this down over it. Make sure you're staying within the score lines here of your hinges. Okay, right there. the pocket goes on and you can put it anywhere you want to along the bottom uh, you know in the center I'm going to take it towards more towards the bottom I think like that have some little ghosts peeking out the bottom so go ahead and put your glue on there Now we've got places for tags. Now this is an opening. This is an opening. So you want to make sure you burnish this to get this down so that it stays. Burnish it really, really, really well. Okay, so there's the pocket there. So this closes and then this ties. And then I'm going to tie knots in the ends of my seam binding ribbon because as you see here it will ravel and tie it make it easier. Bring it all the way almost to the end and then I'm going to trim it off. And so now if it frays it's okay it's not going to go beyond um, 
than not usually. Okay, now we can tie it back up. And I'm not adding tags or anything right now. We're going to get ready to work on our center section. And finishing up these uh, inside spines. So there's what we have so Before far. Before we start on this center section, I'm going to go ahead and do something for the spines here. I'm going to make these little uh, fun sliders. So you need to cut two pieces of cardstock that are seven, seven, eight, seven and seven eighths tall by one and three eighths wide. And they're going to fit right in here. And then go ahead and cut your pattern paper for those, which are uh, let's see, sorry, looking at my notes. The pattern papers are. I didn't write that down. Let me measure it real quick. One and one and a quarter wide. That's what I've cut mine out of scraps by seven and three quarters tall. So you want those. Then you want two scrap pieces of cardstock that are. three and a half by two and a quarter and we're going to score the three and a half side at one inch and two and a half and I've already done the other one so bring this back now then we're going to put pattern paper on this piece of cardstock that we cut Go ahead and do your pattern paper in both pieces. Oops. Get off down here. There we go, man. Maybe not. There we go. Okay, so that's for this side with the ghost. And the other side's going to be the Plaid. Sliders are a lot of fun, especially if you have little ones that like to look at your albums or your folios. Now, I haven't decided what I'm going to put on my slider yet. I'll do that when I do the decorating, probably. Now, to create the slider, we're going to take this piece and put the widest part on the back and wrap it around and glue it on the front. That's so that there's no seam back here so that it slides easy. So you can put some glue just over on this piece that overlaps. Like this right here. You don't want to get it on your pattern paper. So just make sure you burnish that down. There's no glue on your pattern paper. So that this will slide up and down okay and the other one same way so you want the big section in the back slide to place this in wrap this around and then put your glue on the edge that seam will be covered up with pattern paper uh, i'm not going to do my pattern paper yet because i don't know um well i might go ahead and do that i might put the opposites on here so if you've got a slider here now then in your section in here and I tore my paper there a little bit okay this is going to fit in but you only put glue like you do a belly band on the back side at the very top a line of glue and at the bottom and then you're going to place this right between right on your spine section on the inside not over any of your folds so you see how this slides up and down okay and the other one
and this just fits right into the spine section on the inside. We got our slider, and it's pretty stable because it's on cardstock, not just the patterned paper. Some glue off there. Now then, if you want to add pattern paper, we can go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so I cut two pieces, uh, one other stripe, one other plaid that are one and three eighths wide by two and one eighth tall. So that will be down in the cutting list. So I'm gonna put the stripe one over here as it comes from the other side. I'm deciding not to do ghosts because I'm gonna probably put another element on top. So ghosts might be too busy as opposed to the stripes so just put this over it so now you see your seam is covered and this one over here so now they're ready for decorative elements later and now we're ready for the center section 